What is tape saturation? How does it work? Well, I'm about to show you Logic Pro 10's secret tape saturation plugin. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Mythical here again. Just wanna show you a really quick video on Logic Pro 10's tape saturation plugin hidden in plain sight. So some of you might be wondering, what is tape saturation? I'm sure you've heard it before, but it is basically an effect that is used in plugin form to emulate the nuances and character for what recorded audio sound did when it hit tape or tubes in the studio. So in front of me, I have a track that I wrote like a week ago called Before the Storm. It's a down tempo track. There's lots of synth and melody and a cool driving sexy beat. So. Let's take a listen to this, and I'm going to add some tape saturation to my drum bus because I have everything bussed to a now empty bus. So let's take a quick listen and hear what we're working with. Cool. Well, I kind of want a little bit of tape saturation, so where would I find that? So on my empty bus, I'm gonna go down to delay and go to tape delay. So the last thing that we want is to actually have any delay effect. So we're gonna turn everything off. Make sure that's 0, 0, 0 0.0 milliseconds and the feedback to zero percent. So basically all we're working with now is that tape emulation. All of the magic happens in character, the clip threshold, and the uh, blending output and um, the dry and the wet signal. So I'm going to increase my dry all the way to 100% and drop my wet signal to zero percent. The clip threshold is where the tape saturation distortion happens. So in this case, and this is just the way I do it, the way you do it may be completely different and that is okay. I'm going to drop it all the way to 20 because I'm going to blend it slightly with the wet signal. So if I play it right now, the track, there will be no signal coming through. Um, no wet signal, meaning there's no saturation. So let's play it and I'm going to slowly increase the wet signal, the saturated signal, into the drums. Okay. If I go to 100%, it's going to be completely oversaturated, and that's not what we want. We just want a, a little bit of character. So if I do that, you can hear really oversaturated. Okay. So you might be asking yourself, well, what if I only want a particular range of frequencies that I want saturated? Well, Logic was kind enough to add a low cut and high cut filter. So let's say I don't want any of the kick saturated and I just want the snares and the rest of the percussion saturated. I'm going to do 550 and 7000. Let's just say that. Let's just say we want that range saturated. Let's listen to it now. Let's go to 100%. And you can really hear it. So none of the other frequencies are being saturated, only in between 550 and 7000. say 50 percent let's bypass it it'll be very subtle so tape saturation does have a little bit of compressing uh, characteristic to it um, but I'm going to show you what the tape saturation really is doing as far as signal goes and I made a sine wave 
channel that will illustrate that. And it's, it's just a singular voice, basic sine wave. And if any of you listening and watching haven't heard what a sine wave sounds like, this is what it sounds like. Yeah. So on our EQ, that's what it sounds like. So I'm going to drop that to save your ears and mine. And we'll just be watching what introducing tape saturation does to this singular signal right here. Okay. So I have tape delay already engaged, but no saturation coming through it. I have the entire audio spectrum. And as I increase the wet signal, you're going to you're going to start seeing a really interesting effect happen. So let's let's see what happens here. I'm slowly increasing the wet signal. All of that saturation. Isn't that cool? So these frequencies weren't there before. But as I increased the saturation, it made them more present. Okay? Very, very cool. And that's part of the reason why you get that warming effect or it's pleasing to the ear because it's introducing extra frequencies that are harmonic to uh, the song or the, the instrument that you're, that you're playing. So very, very interesting. So this is the tape saturation. What would happen if we introduced some of Logic's built-in vintage EQ? Vintage EQ, they have the console, graphic, and tube EQ. So let's say we started with the console, okay? And I have it all, I have it bypassed, so there's no signal coming through. And as I start to increase the drive in the console EQ, you'll start to see just a little bit, just a little bit. Wow, isn't that cool? So the more drive that you push through, the more harmonic presence that you get. Now obviously you're not gonna wanna completely overdrive your signal unless that's what you're wanting to do, but as, as far as experimentation goes, this is what these EQs are doing and the tape saturation. I found that the console EQ is a lot more responsive to this basic sine wave and you get more signal response with the console EQ. But let's say let's say that we want to use tape delay on our master bus. So before my light compression on my master stereo out, I engage a tape delay. And this time I want the entire audio spectrum. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like without any saturation. This is the full track. Here we go. No saturation. Slowly increase the saturation. So you can really start to hear it. At rate right about 30%, it starts to over distort. It starts to sound pretty nasty, so subtlety is the key. I'd say between 20 and 30% max. Without. Bypass with yeah so that is the tape saturation plugin hidden in the tape delay 
plugin in Logic Pro 10. And I really hope that you found some benefit from this video and a little bit of education as to kind of what the tape saturation really is doing to your signal. So, you know, if you like it, hit that like button. If you dislike it, hit the dislike button. Otherwise, I will see you in the comments and see you next time. Thanks for watching.